Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to the Scrap FX YouTube channel. Today we're going to be working on an art journal page called Follow Your Heart. I'm working in my small dilutions use it up journal. This is a journal I use to clean off my stencils, clean off paint brushes, put in extra collage bits and pieces and it usually means that I'm working on a page that doesn't have a white background. It's already been started in some way, shape or form. So I, I'm going in with some gold texture paste, this texture paste from Finnebear and I'm just spreading out the extra paste that I've got on my palette knife onto my page as well and then as you can see I'm cleaning off my stencil further on in my journal so that's another page that I've got started further on. I'm going back in and heating up the paste, uh, heating up the texture paste just to dry it. The texture paste dries fairly quickly. You certainly don't need to leave it overnight like you used to but you, you can do. I'm not a very patient person when I art journal. Usually I want to get it done all in one session so I tend to pull out my heat gun and dry it and it really doesn't take that long to dry. Once it has dried mostly, it doesn't need to be dried the full way through but certainly the surface needs to be dry enough that you can apply some paints over the top. So I'm going in with some of the Dina Wakely Night paint and then with some of the Jane Davenport um, navy blue paint as well. And I'm just going in with a wet wipe to wet, wipe it off the top of the texture paste. And a uh, wet wipe is really handy to do that. Um, you can see with the Jane Davenport paint sort of painting around it, but I wanted it to go into sort of all the nooks and crannies and texture that that texture paste had created. So having a wet wipe on hand is really handy just to rub it off. And you can see the interesting effect that it gives having that texture paste spread thinly on the base top and bottom of the page as well. And then I'm just going in again with my heat gun to dry it all off. Now the Dina Wakely paint has a, a semi-gloss finish and the Jane Davenport paint has a matte finish so it gives you an interesting look in the end. Um, when I'm finished I'll show you how to make the whole page glossy but uh, at this stage I'm not too concerned about that. So I'm going in with the Jane Davenport Squid Ink in Beluga White and just a random text stamp just to add some detail and to some interest into the background. I tend to add text in some way, shape or form to all my journal pages. It's just for me something that breaks up the background and gets rid of that white page syndrome that I have. And again, this is another page that I had some texture paste on and I was just using up the blue paint that I had left on my paintbrush. Nothing gets wasted. So that's another page that I've got sort of started on later on. Now just to bring out that texture paste a little bit more I'm going back in with my Inca Gold Wax and just going around the edges and over the texture paste just to pick it up again. You can see the stamping in the background is not perfect and that's okay. It's just to break up the background and add some interest. So as I was doing all this I sort of didn't really start off with a plan but a plan formed as I went along and it came from that texture paste. Now the texture paste I did through the stencil is actually I think like netting or a dragon skin stencil but to me it really reminded me of a beehive. So I, with some collage paper, uh, plain collage paper I stamped up this beautiful bee I've got from Judikins and I dried it off um, to make sure it was really dry. Now that's really important when you're doing this because I am going to be using some gel medium over the top to dry it down. You don't want it to be wet or it will smear. So use permanent ink or um, something that's not going to bleed. And now I'm just going in and fussy cutting all around the bees which takes a little bit of time but it, for me it's really important to cut these images out as close to the edge as possible. The reason for that is when you glue these down on your page, while the gloss or gel medium will make the image go translucent, if you've got that halo around of white, um, it's not going to go completely translucent. So you still have some sort of halo around it. And for most people that probably doesn't bug you, but for me it really does bug me. Um, so I like to get rid of it as much as possible. Once I've stamped out the images, I'm working out where I'm going to stick them down on the page. 
and I'm using the uh, Steampunk B from Scrap FX as my main focal image on this page. I just loved the detail that goes onto this um, chipboard piece. It's actually two pieces, that little cog on the top um, comes away. And it's just so much detail in it and it's just such a beautiful, beautiful image. So I just love this. And I love the effect that I was sort of getting this metamorphosis from the bee into this steampunk bee, you know. This bee's following his heart and he's becoming not just an ordinary bee but into this amazing work of art bee. Um, so that was where my train of thought was going from this page and it all revolved around seeing that beautiful image and knowing I wanted to use it somewhere in my journal. So you can see I'm very generous applying the gel medium to my piece. The reason for that is the more gel medium you've got down, the more translucent your collage paper is going to be. I'm also applying it with my finger because it is such a delicate image um, with those legs and so on that I want to make sure everything gets glued down. I'm also gluing one of these bees underneath the steampunk bee because I want that sort of transition from that uh, metamorphosis from the bee into the steampunk bee. And because the wings of the bee are open, you can see the stamped image underneath as well, which I really like that that will happen. Now you can see on my page, I'm getting that gloss effect and you can see the light reflecting off it. To combat that, what I'm doing is putting that gloss gel medium over the entire page. Now you can get matte gel medium, which means obviously it's going to stay matte and it works just as well. I just happen to have some gloss medium and that's what I used. So I painted it over the entire page. The entire page has this gloss effect now. And just to make sure that everything stays the same. Now I'm going in with my B and putting some black gesso on it or black paint and I'm not sure if you could see the detail that's on this but on the body of the B it's actually got a honeycomb carved into it as well. I'm also using the excess paint around the edge of my page of that black just to sort of frame off my page. The reason I'm putting the black onto my B is I wanted to put some of this Inca gold over the top and you can see I'm not being particularly careful with how I'm doing it because I wanted to have some of that black peeping through. I'm then going in with some of the uh, metallic brass paste from Finnebear on the cog and on the filament of the light bulb just so again that stands out. And when I'm applying it to my chipboard I apply it with my finger and the reason for that is if you pounce it up and down with your finger you get some texture on it as well which is fantastic for putting some of those waxes over the top because it catches in the texture. Now all I'm doing is just playing with some other different bits and pieces I've got in my stash. I did put some of the uh, Nouveau Aqua Glitter, Aqua Pen Glitter over the wings just to add a little bit of sparkle to it. And I was playing around with some of the other Scrap FX uh, steampunk, I think it's called Fractured Time, the, the piece of um, chipboard that I was trying out in the corner. But I decided I didn't want to use that in the end because I found this quote that I really loved, again from Scrap FX called Follow Your Heart and Live Your Dream, which I just thought was a brilliant summary of what I wanted happening on this page, those honeybees turning into this steampunk bee. You know, it's following its dream and it's following its heart and living its dream. So to um, add a little bit more detail to the bees, I'm going in with some gold ink and just painting it over the, the bodies of the bees to make them stand out a little bit. The ink I'm using is the Jane Davenport um, gold ink for her new squid inks. It comes in a separate reinker bottle and I had it sitting on my desk and it's a really bright gold so I thought it would fit in well with the page. It kind of matches the colour of the inker gold wax that you put over the top too so it sort of blends it all together. In hindsight looking at the page I wish I'd sort of left it without that extra gold on it but it does add some extra detail and it gives you that um, sort of the following on of the bee as it goes around the page. It certainly leads your eye around the page having that gold there. 
particularly with the um, the different colour of the, the steampunk bee, it, it gives a real contrast between the two. So with the follow your heart chipboard, I'm just going again going in with that brass paste sort of to echo the steampunk bee. Again applying it with my finger to get that texture in it. And applying it with my finger because it's such a fine piece of chipboard, it's a really handy way to be able to do it. If you don't want to use your finger, use a makeup sponge or something. You just need a minimum amount of paint on it uh, to, to, to get the effect. So um, it really doesn't take much to colour it up. But I find if you want to get that texture I was talking about, applying it with your, your finger is probably the best way to go. To glue this all down on my page, I'm using some liquid adhesive. Um, it's just a mixed media glue that I've got. It does tend to get stuck a lot, so if you've got a, a fine pin around just to unblock it when it does get stuck is a really good idea. It does dry clear, so um, you don't need to worry about if it leaks out on the edge. So you can just see I'm sort of applying it in random places around. It doesn't need to go on every letter, but just enough to make sure it's all glued down. And I did put a weight on the B and I put a weight on top of the, the chipboard letter as well, just to make sure it's all glued down, particularly because I'm gluing these both on texture paste as well. So the glue may not be adhering to the actual paper of the journal. I just want to make sure that it's all sitting where it needs to be. So that's the end of my journal really. It's a really simple page. It came together quite quickly but I really love how it came together and I think the main reason I love this page is because of that beautiful, beautiful bee. In the close-ups you can see the texture on the chipboard pieces by applying it just by pouncing your finger up and down and you can see where the, the wax is caught on those bits of texture. So. I hope you have a go at doing some of these techniques in your art journal or apply it to some of your um, scrapbook or card making activities as well. It's a really easy technique to, to do and I hope that you continue to follow along with this channel. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, see you later.